on today's Technobabble, my review of this, the Boxcaster from Boxcast. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I help you with church video and graphic design. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to join the conversation. So, by all means, just leave your comment below the video. That's a great way. If you're listening to the audio, no problem. Go ahead and head over to Trinity digitalmedia.com slash contact. Got all my contact information there, or you can just leave a comment there. Either way is perfectly fine. So I know a lot of churches, they do live streaming or they're thinking about doing it. And the default idea is to use a computer to do the encoding. That may or may not be the best idea because depending on how high definition your video is. You know, if it's standard definition, maybe you can get by with one, but if it's 720p, 1080p, or better, then you need either a really beefy computer or you need an external device. And I've been testing out this one. This is the Boxcaster. It's from Boxcast, and it's a cool little piece of gear, and let me tell you a little bit about it. First off, it handles both standard definition and high definition. Out of the box on this end, we have the uh, HDMI in or the uh, composite and analog audio inputs. So you can, if you're at standard definition, no problem, you can convert to composite and send that in here. If you're uh, working on a digital uh, workflow, then HDMI can go into here. That's also one of the limitations, is the Boxcaster does not have an SDI input. That's not a huge limitation, though, because you can convert from SDI to HDMI fairly easily, fairly inexpensively. So that's not a deal breaker in my opinion. On the other end, we have an aux jack, which is a USB. I think that's used for service. Um, and then you've got a uh, Cat5 connection. That's your network connection if you want to go hardwired. And then you've got power. The Network connection, though, doesn't have to be hardwired. It can also run over Wi-Fi, so you can set that up as well. One of the best advantages to this box is that no one is going to install the latest version of Windows and gack up your system. No one is going to download a game that they think is okay, but turns out messes up your box. No one's going to have some sort of problem that they cause when they're trying to be helpful or just not thinking to your encoder box when you have a box cast. So that, that's good. Um, it's very easy to set up. You put, uh, connect it to your network, then you go into their web page, you register it, put in your username and password, and basically you're ready to go. You schedule a live stream and then you're good. So that's one of the other advantages. It's fairly easy. There's no heavy lifting on the back end. So I really like that. These retail for about $500 directly from Boxcast and their monthly service, depending on a couple of things, runs about $100 a month. So you buy the box, you plug in your video signal, you sign up to the service and you're done. And you have what's really nice looking video coming into this little piece that doesn't tie up another computer and it's just a great little piece. With that said, 
you might notice that it's a little less expensive than something comparable like the Teradek Video. And um, the reason for that is it only works on BoxCast. Now, if you only use BoxCast, that's not a problem. If you do use, if you do think that you may someday in the future change, then the BoxCaster just doesn't work on other systems. So that's a downside. Um, the other downside is the back end provides everything you need, but it doesn't provide some of the uh, things that some of the streaming only providers provide. So there's no offline video mode. There's no schedule a pre-recorded video. You know, uh, like last winter, for example, my church, we thought we might be out um, during one of the Sundays because they had predicted a couple of feet of snow. And in Kentucky, we don't deal well with more than a couple of inches of snow. So they predicted all this snow coming in. So the pastor recorded his message ahead of time and scheduled that, knowing that if the weather person was incorrect, we could just go in on Sunday morning, turn that off, and everybody's happy. But if the uh, meteorologist was correct, then we would um, be able just to turn on our TVs and watch the live stream. So that's not included in this. They don't have that as an ability. There's uh, no ability to create a Roku channel from it, not within their system. You could probably do that uh, elsewhere, but you just couldn't do that within their system. So it's a very basic and reliable system. It has some downsides, but as you might be aware, nothing's perfect. Uh, now, in full disclosure mode, you should know they sent me the box cast box, the box caster, for free, and they gave me a couple of months to try it out on their service, also for free. So I just wanted to be absolutely honest that that was how I got this and how I uh, was able to do this review of the unit. For some churches, this is perfect. For other churches, if you want control over the encoding settings, if you want control over um, just all kinds of minutia. Maybe this isn't the right piece for you. So if you're a huge church, a giga church, you know, not just a mega church, but a mega mega church, this probably isn't the right box for you because you're not going to have the kind of control that a dedicated person would want. On the other hand, if you're a smaller church and you have the budget for it, it's really going to save you a lot of time and effort. So it's right for some churches. It's not right for others. Um, but I think I would recommend it if it is right for you. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that you're able to now see a possibility, something that might make your live streaming easier. If you like this content, then by all means, subscribe to my email newsletter. And you can hit that at trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can find all manner of uh, church tech gifts that I want to give you and a free subscription to my email newsletter where I'll tell you more tips and tricks and give you news about what's happening here at trinitydigitalmedia.com. If you like that, you'll probably like my store as well where I've made resources with you in mind to save you time and effort. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store. There you can find some of my books, some of the courses I've created, etc. And if you don't find what you want, don't worry. I'm always adding new stuff, so check back often to see if you find exactly what you need. Until next time, go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.